Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Lori. We've already had a prayer and a pledge, so we're just going to go right into it. So, um, welcome. Okay, if you're not sitting, it's your fault, because there's lots of room. <laughs> we, we made sure that there was enough room this time, that nobody had to stand. All right, I am Lisa Sandberg, and I am the county party chair. I want to quickly introduce you to our executive committee, and then we're going to get started. So Barry had to be excused. He's our vice chair. He had a meeting that he, a work meeting he had to be to tonight. Um, Brandon Morgan is our secretary. You will receive lots of communication from him, so we'll talk about that in a few minutes. And then Laurie Terry is our uh, treasurer. And then... District 72 chair is Ray Justice. He's working, so he can't be here tonight. Um, District 73 is Kimball Willard. District 74 is Jody Valentine. And District 75 is Jeff Adams. <laughs> I just was going to call you a guy that I went to high school with. I haven't even thought of that name in, like, forever. Okay. All right. So you are here. Um, because you, everyone in this room are delegates, yes? Okay, if you are not a delegate and you don't want to be here, you don't have to be, but you can be if you want to be. So we appreciate you coming. Um, this is great, you guys. We have, uh, raise your hand if you're a county delegate. Oh my gosh, that is so fantastic. Okay, raise your hand if you are a state delegate. All the rest of it, this is the same. Okay, that is great. Lots of us serve in county and state, so we're glad that you're there, that you're here. We have 605 county delegates countywide, so we've got a pretty good showing here tonight. That makes me really happy. Now, raise your hand if you have never been a delegate before. Oh, you don't know how happy this makes me. I love when we get new blood. Sometimes it's so scary to let new blood in to our leadership. <laughs> we kind of want to hold on to it and we get, we get worried that they won't vote the way we want them to or whatever it is for whatever reason. And, and you know, I tell my husband we're part of the gray-haired club now. And we're all going to die, you guys. And if we don't get some more young people in this party... I don't know what's going to happen to our party, and we cannot hang on to things so tightly, keeping our youth out of the party. We've got to bring them in here and get them involved. I was just talking to a gentleman who said that his 22-year-old son got elected. I was so happy. We need more of our youth involved. You should have received a county delegate duties and a state delegate duties. Did everyone receive that? Oh, way too many. Okay, let's back this up. How, this is what it looks like, in case you don't know what it looks like. Okay, it said county delegate duties and responsibilities. If you received that, will you raise your hand? Okay, if you didn't receive it, will you raise your hand? Okay, good. More than half received it. That makes me happy. Okay, so let me, let me send that as well. Um, the state looks just like it. So... I'm going to assume those of you who received county, received state, and those of you who, received, who didn't, didn't. All right, so first up, I, I'm going to have our district chairs are going to um, do this, this part of the training. So um, we're going to have Kimball, and we're going to have them each take about eight to ten minutes, and then at the end I will finish up. So, Kimball, you're first, and then Jeff, and then Jody. So it's very important as you go to the different meetings and meet with the different candidates that you go in with an understanding, and this really should have been the understanding when you're running to be a delegate, who do you represent? If you were there because you got an email from a candidate saying, vote for me, I want you to be a delegate, you were there for the wrong reason. I'm sorry. I know there's several that did. You represent the precinct. It's your responsibility to, to listen to all the candidates, find out what they stand for, so you can and communicate that what you learn with your precinct, so that you, when you go in to, to do nominations and do votings at, at the conventions, that you are representing the will of the precinct. You're not supposed to be there ahead of time for a specific candidate. It's 
very, very important. That's how we protect the caucus system. That's how we, we override SB 54. So go into that open-minded. Be willing to take all the emails, as annoying as they are, from all the candidates. Go to each of their meetings as much as you can, you know, within, we usually all have busy schedules, but try and get as much information as possible and communicate that with your precinct. Discuss with them. Um, there's been, uh, in the last meeting with leadership, um, discussing ways to, to, to share the information, whether that's a, a Facebook group or a group me, or but come up with some way of communicating that with the precinct so you can be expressing to the precinct what you're learning and also be getting the information back from the precinct members what their feelings are so that when you go to the, the, the conventions, you are representing the, the majority will of the people in your precinct. Um, and again, we're gonna get, you're going to get a ton of emails. Make sure that you're checking your spam, your promotions, your junk. Um, and for those of us that were already delegates, we're already, I was already getting them three weeks ago. You're going to get besieged with it. But it ends quickly. Um, <laughs> and you need to understand, very importantly, the actual job description of what the candidates are running for. Um, you're, you're not just betting who they are as a person and, and their character and their morals, but do they understand the position they're going into? How are they going to do that job? Because that's what you're electing. And you also need to understand, I recommend going through what their oath of office is. Um, I gotta be very cautious here because uh, I, I ran for an office last summer that was not part of the party, and I question the oath that many people have taken that, were, that have that position. Make sure you understand what the oath is that they're gonna be taking so that you can ask questions pertinent to the, that oath of office to make sure that they understand what that oath is and that they will adhere to that oath of office. And also make sure that you understand the U.S. Constitution, the Utah Constitution, the GOP, Utah GOP platform. They're running as Republicans, which means that they are running with, they are saying by running as a Republican that they will adhere to the party platform, whether it's county or state, that they will adhere to the Utah Constitution. And if they adhere to the Utah Constitution, they by damn better be adhering to the U.S. Constitution. Sorry to be a little bl I'm blunt there, but that's exactly how I feel about it. Again, all this encompasses your role as, uh, as delegates, both at the county level and at the state. Make sure you, that your, your, your precinct understands what these people represent, so, and you understand what the precinct wants you to do, so that when you go to the, the conventions, you are acting correctly. <clears throat> Before I start, um, this is a little bit irregular, but uh, a lot of you don't realize on the back end of things how how much effort went into this, and particularly one person, at least is sitting here on the stage, has been uh, in the last 60 hours, she's had four hours of sleep. <laughs> so, she's pretty committed to this process, and we appreciate you being here and being committed too. Uh, my force to this is to, what, what questions can we ask of candidates when we're interviewing them? The first thing I want to do is to, uh, since I don't know everything and uh, I, my ideas are maybe good, but yours are going to be better. So I'm going to open it up very quickly to, for just a second. Why don't you talk with your neighbor for about 30 seconds or a minute, and then we're going to let it be an open forum for people to share ideas of the kinds of questions you want to ask, how you can go about it, etc. And I'm going to give you some, some parameters. So go ahead and take about a minute, talk to your neighbor, and uh, let's, uh, then we'll open this up. Thank you. 
Can we, can we, uh, there's a lot of great discussion happening there. You can wind it down real quickly. We'd like to get started on the input forum. Okay, we're going to go ahead and let people raise their hands. So if, you like, if you've got a great idea, start right there. Cable, there's a couple right in the middle there. That was slick. <laughs> For me, I think... Um, the mistake I see a lot is questions that are beyond the purview of the candidate. So if somebody's running for clerk and they start questioning about what they're going to do to get DEI out of Utah schools, for example, I think that it's important that we ask the candidates questions and, and grill them on the things in the purview of the position that they're running for. Excellent. Uh, before you, before that next question, so let me ask this. If you're a county delegate, what people will you be voting for? Anybody have an idea? You'll be voting for state, your state elected officials. If you're a state representative or a state delegate, you're going to be voting for the elections, that the, the uh, our representatives that go back to Washington, okay, and state as well. But so the counties, the county delegates. Okay. All right. Good. Next question. Right here. Some of the things that uh, I've asked. Uh, people who are running for positions is I ask kind of those interview questions that you would get for like a job. So rather than saying, what do you think about this? I say, tell me about a time in which you exhibited leadership in this sort of way. So in um, for uh, the Chris Stewart seat that need to be filled, I ask them, you know, it's really hostile over there in Washington, D.C. How are you, uh, tell me about a time that you work with uh, people who were kind of hostile towards you and how you had a good resolution. So they can talk about their previous experience in a similar position so that they'll have the skill set necessary for the position. Thank you. Next question. Right here. Right here. Yes. Next comment. Um, I have a question about how the party can get these candidates to the meet and greet so that we as, as kind of rural um, delegates can come and find out really what they stand for and see them uh, find out ask our questions how often is that going to happen because a, a little precinct like I'm representing we're not going to get them to come and talk to us well, uh, Lisa's, Lisa's flagged me and she's going to address that question when she stands up and does her portion sorry to put you off but that will be addressed go ahead next comment uh, I'm going to be asking for quite a few questions. So raise, your, raise your hand where you're at. Who's talking? My name is David Edsberg. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to be asking quite a few questions, but one of them is very simple. I'm going to ask each candidate how many genders there are. Yes. <laughs> well, one of the things I've experienced as a delegate is that a lot of delegates that are going to interview candidates monologue. So I'm going to suggest don't monologue to the candidates. Let the candidates talk and ask them pertinent, even pithy questions. But don't don't monologue to your candidates. Great. Yes, right here. So as a state delegate in past, um, what I would do if you're new to being a state delegate, you need to go out and do your research on the candidates. There's a lot of questions already answered. You have to go out there and find the answers for it rather than having a crowd of people 
trying to ask basic questions over and over again. Go out there and do your research. Good. Go ahead, please stand. Jennifer Cassidy, and I'm brand new to this. I'm gonna ask one that I don't think a lot of people think about because I have a son who has schizophrenia and has been homeless for 10 years. So I would wanna know where the candidates stand on addressing the issue of homelessness and mental health. Okay. Next question or next comment? Yes, please stand. So um, I would say as I'm meeting with maybe a senator or someone that is running for Senate as a, as a state delegate, my first question would be, what are your intentions and why do you want to represent Utah as a senator? That's great. In fact, I'm gonna take a second, just for a second, that's gonna be into this a little section about disclosure forms. Every candidate, when they run for candidacy or for, for an office, has to fill out a, a candidate disclosure form which has their reason for running, their intent, et cetera, and we're going to talk about more about that in just a minute. Okay, next. Yes, go ahead. I like to ask, what's the best way I can interact with you when you're in office? That's a really good one. And in fact, in that regard, uh, you're going to get a lot of emails here shortly, and, and most every representative is going to want you, want, to have, want you to have their phone number and email address. So you ought to be making notes of those as you're uh, considering your candidates. Yes. Next one. Who's, who, yeah, go ahead. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to ask them is when's the last time they read the Constitution? Good question. Good. And then I'm going to ask them when's the last time they read the Republican platform? Both excellent questions. Okay, right here. Uh, hi. I'm not great at public speaking. Um, but uh, I know you already briefly touched on this, but asking why they're running, because if they're running for aggressive reasons to destroy others, none of us want that. We want someone who wants the betterment of everyone. Great, thank you. Yeah, one, one more, we got one more? Right here, Kimbo, would you please do that, right there? I wanna know where their donations are coming from. And who's backing them? Okay, I'm not going to take any more questions, but I do want to. I want to cover a point with you. A lot of people uh, have a neighbor that's running, or they have somebody they really like, etc. And uh, or there, there's candidates running. They say, "I want to run because I'm conservative and I stand for, you know, motherhood and apple pie and and all that's good, right?" Well, as you start to talk to candidates. Some great questions are, what are your qualifications? What have you done in the past that makes you qualified to take this next office? Because a lot of people take, can take offices and they're unqualified and they get pretty much blacklisted because they don't act the way they should be acting and don't perform the way they should be performing. So as you look at the candidates that you're gonna question, a good question to ask of them is, what experience have you had and why are you qualified for this position? Yes. bold with them and I just look at them right in the eye and say who are you beholden to and if they pause and they have to think about it they're not thinking because they should automatically say out of their mouth you that's a good question good, good statement okay uh, the last one then we're gonna I'm gonna go on I think what has been said has been great, but one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dig down into our platform and I'm going to pick some actual statements from our platform and ask them specifically how they would handle such and such and see if they really even understand our platform. Thank you. Great, great idea. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, uh, on the on the Washington County Republican Party website, which is WC, let's see, WCRPUtah.gov, there is a, or got, dot com, excuse me. This is the this is the website right here. And let me go back to the home page. All of you ought to go out tonight and get familiar with this website. This is really important. 
Okay, this has got a lot of information on it. It's got the calendar of everything we do as a pub, uh, as a party. You'll see events. You'll see this. You'd see this meeting. You'd see our conventions, both the county and the state. And you'll also see here over here to the right candidates, candidates, and candidate disclosures. And as I mentioned, here's the here's the candidate disclosure form. This is what they fill out when they run for office. It's right there. You can see they have to write my beliefs contrary, uh, contrary to the platform. So if they believe something contrary to the platform, they have to disclose that. Okay. So everybody ought to take a look and, and watch for these uh, disclosure forms for the candidates that are running. Okay. Now one last one last point that I'll be done. Uh, you can uh, let me go back. At least I probably lost my place with your. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so last one is, uh, I'm going to talk about this for a second. This is a favorite topic of mine. We are here because we have diverse ideas. And I, can, I bet you if I stand up with any one of you and we take 10 topics, you're going to disagree with me on at least three of them, maybe more. But that doesn't mean that I should disrespect you or that you should disrespect me. When you talk to these candidates, these candidates have beliefs and they have experiences in life. And the strength that we derive as Republicans is that we have diverse ideas and not every idea is quote right. Some ideas are better than others. And so as you express your opinion, be respectful of other people. You never want to burn a bridge. You never want to burn a bridge. Don't go haywire, don't go ballistic on a candidate trying to profess your beliefs. Listen to them, understand them. If they disagree with your opinion, be respectful of it and say, I thank you, I appreciate that. And I don't necessarily agree with you, but I certainly respect your opinion. And that's an okay thing to say. Any other comments on that? Uh, All right, I'm done. Do you have a question? That yes. candidate disclosure statement. How do we get access to read what the candidates filled out? Uh, the, we said the candidate disclosure statements are, all of them are located, do we have them posted on the website? Uh, they will be on the, on the website. Those are for the, the county delegates, the state delegates you'll find at the Utah State website, election website. Okay, next one. I went on the website and I found the uh, Republican platform, but I wasn't able to print it out. It just, there's no option to print that out, so I have to sit there at my computer and try to read it. Is there a way we can get copies of those documents in hand? Uh, I don't. I don't have the answer to that standing here, but I certainly will research it tonight, and we'll figure out how you can print that on your computer. That's that'd be a good call. Thank you. All right. Hey, I'm going to be quick because I know you guys have been busy, just like we have been. So we're going to talk about your responsibilities to precinct members. I want you to remember who you represent. It's very easy as you're looking at candidates and you're asking questions. You're going to form your own personal opinion. But you need to go out beyond your own opinion and get the opinion of the members in your precinct. A great way to do that is talk to people in your neighborhood because your precinct is your neighborhood. Reach out to them when you see them at the grocery store or at the gas station. Um, listen to their input and then also it's really important that you go we're gonna have a meet-and-greet for the county delegates and a meet-and-greet for the state delegates that you go and listen to what they have to say and there also oftentimes is um, information like on zoom they'll have if they have a meet-and-greet somewhere else you can watch it on zoom and get as much information as you can read about it because if someone comes to you and says you should vote for this person and you think this person was, would be better, you need to be able to have a discussion and say, well, this is what I learned about this person, this is what I've learned about this person, and this is what I've learned about this person. And sometimes you have to go out there and search because I know you're not going to believe this, but sometimes there's just information out there. <laughs> so you're going to have to look through it and find out what the real facts are and be able to have a solid way to back up who you think you should vote for, but also to listen to your people because if there's anything that Republicans hate, it's somebody who doesn't represent their ideas. If they go and they vote completely opposite of how the majority of their constituents would feel. So let's make sure we don't ever do that. Um, if, you, if you cannot make 
because this year you know exactly when there is, the dates are and it's coming up really quick, right? So you knew your schedule. But a year from now, the county will time will be around sometime in March around the same time and the state time will be sometime in April around the same time. So try to kind of keep that in mind when you make your plans for a year from now in March and in April. But if for some reason you are not gonna be able to make it, the sooner you let your precinct chair know the better so that they have time to get a hold of the delegates that are alternates and find out if they can make it. And if they can't make it, then they have to find somebody in your precinct. And this takes time. And if they're busy and out of town, guess who gets to do it? I do. And they know your precinct so much better than I do and who would be good to send. So be sure that you communicate with your precinct chair if you have any problems with being able to attend something. Now, if you move and that's happened, like I had a precinct chair move this time around, um, we had someone, you know, with different problems that we had to, to figure out. So please remember if something like that happens and you're moving, you will not be in your precinct to let your precinct chair know so that they can replace you ahead of time for the events that are coming up. And that is all I'm going to say because Lisa has some things to say and we want to get you out of here in a timely fashion. But call us if you ever need anything, please call your your district chairs like us. We would be happy to help you anytime. Call us, email us, and we'll help you with anything that we can. Okay? Okay, the biggest hang up I have right now with everything that I've heard is exactly how to communicate with my district with with my people i honestly facebook page i don't know how to how, i don't know how to gather all the information to, to do all the things so i'm really looking for some guidance on how to communicate really okay so if you are sending if if something is coming up if you're a county delegate <clears throat> lisa sandberg and brandon morgan are amazing and they will send out an email with a call to convention and they will have every piece of information that your delegates need to know about the county delegate, I mean the county convention or the state convention. And you may get more than one. So once again, check your emails when they're coming up because they will send them out to every single person. So every delegate should get that information. Now, one or two of you said you didn't get an email about this meeting. Um, you have to realize that we only got your information Tuesday night and we were there till two in the morning, just collecting all the packets and getting everything checked off. People have to work during the day. Lisa, I think she stayed up all night again the next night, trying to get that in. So if we missed one or two of you, that could happen just because the time frame was so short before we had this meeting. But by the time the county convention comes around, we should have everything entered. As long as your information is accurate, you will get sent an email about what's going on. Did you? Well, so what information are you wanting to get out to them? Your precinct members? Okay, it, you will get those emails and those phone numbers, but do you want to? Because you'll get a spreadsheet that will have that all on, that, on it. David, were you here in the last part of the meeting? Okay, so we talked about that in the last part of the meeting. I, I, you only have the information you guys collected. So if your precinct didn't collect anybody's emails but your own, you're stuck. Perfect. Now the rest of them, that's who you're, that right now it is because we don't know, we don't have the other information. Now I will tell you, I'm working with Walt Brooks to, to try to get some legislation through so that we can get phone numbers and emails as they're given to, as they register to vote. But it's gonna take an act of Congress, Utah Congress, to get that passed. Because people, unfortunately, the people who care are the ones who came to caucus. And the others don't, and they don't wanna be hounded, and they don't want to give up their information. But we're trying to say, if you mark the box Republican in Utah, now, I didn't know this, you guys. In some states, you don't. You don't declare your party on your voter registration. Um, but in Utah, when you mark that, you're a member of our party, and we need to have that information. So I'm working with Walt, with Representative Brooks, to see if we can get that 
through in the next session, but that's, you know, and everything takes usually more than a session to get through. He's working on revamping a whole bunch of the election uh, procedures and laws, so that'll be just one part of it. So, but in the meantime, group me, Facebook pages, emails, texts, etc. So the other thing you could do is on your on your spreadsheet at the bottom there was the 2022 caucus and then the 2024. There might be phone numbers and emails from the 2022 yes. that did not get put on the 2024. So if you can print them out, print them out, and then then add them on as you <coughs> as you get them so that you have because the 2022 is pretty complete. Yes. So well, it's should, completed who attended. Yeah. So I mean, there's a lot on there. Also, there's some people that choose to withhold. So their information will never show because they do not want you to see it. Usually it's policemen, those kind of people that don't want people to find them and I understand why. So there might be something you'll never get because they put withheld. Anything else? Thank you. Okay. Also, um, the, the, this is the nice thing about our live spreadsheets is they're live from two years ago. They're still there. All the information we collected two years ago is there. All we collected Tuesday night is still there, but also even though that pre-registration thing was a pain and luckily our county didn't do it and we didn't have the problems that Salt Lake County had, but we do have that information in there. So the information that the state collected through the pre-registration is in your spreadsheet as well at the bottom on a tab that says pre-registration. And that does have a bunch more phone numbers and emails for you. Yes, sir. Uh, related to the previous questions uh, that you asked, do we have a policy or any kind of a thoughts on, on physically canvassing our neighborhoods and our precinct? Uh, and I mean like walking door to door. And the policy would interest. be absolutely humane. And we would love it if you did. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, one more here. Yes. Um, you're talking about the spreadsheet with the information and mm -hmm. the information collected at the meeting. Uh, do we get that from our chair or where is that accessible we will, to if, me? Okay, if you signed the data protection policy, which you should have after you were installed, um, after you were sworn in, uh, then you will get access to it. We have, I'm sorry you guys, it's only two days after, and we haven't granted all the accesses. But if I have your data protection policy, whoever signed that will have access. So if you didn't sign it, get with your chair and sign it, and then get it to us. Okay, uh, one more, and then we're gonna move on. Utah Republican Party platform PDF and you'll be taken to the Iron County website that has a downloadable printable platform. Good. Okay, thank you. One more. <laughs> okay, go fast. You know, I don't know where, where to look. I mean, I was, the only thing that I could read was what they were posting in their website, you know, this particular uh, candidate. But. Okay, if you go to our website. That, before that, like for instance, how did they vote it before if they were uh, be, uh, running for re-election? How they voted before? What was their their uh, conduct in, in the past? Whether they switch parties from one to another? Yes. No, where that do I find gonna, that information? That you will have to research. I don't know of any one place that that is in. Okay. But on our county website, we do have the, um, the, the candidates that are running. So go to our county website and you'll find, and you can research what we've been given. This is what the candidates have given us. Okay, um, let's go on and talk a little bit. We have the state, well, most of them is pictures of the state. If you go to the Utah GOP website, I think you can find the state stuff on there. But there is some of it on ours as well. We, have, we, gave, we sent emails to all of them and said, please give us your stuff and we'll put it on our website. What's on there is what they gave us. But most of them, especially the ones running for state, they're all like, they spend lots of money and they've got websites. All you gotta do is put them in the Google search and you'll find them. All right, let's talk about convention. Uh, okay, did what was the one question that I said I was going to cover that came from over in that area? It was how to get the candidates down when oh, we okay, get thank to you. meet yep. them. Okay, I'm going to cover that in just a moment. Okay, so 
I want to just talk to you a little bit about uh, this statement on DI. We are a nominating body. Voters are the electing body. I want you to remember that. Um, sometimes we think as delegates that we elect candidates. We do not. We are the nominating body. Our convention is called a nominating convention, not an electing convention. Our job is to nominate our party's candidate, um, nominee. And then in whether we get two coming out of convention or and we go to a primary, the voters elect, or we go straight to the general election in November and the voters elect. So just remember that. Our job is to nominate. We, our job is to nominate the best candidate for the Republican Party. So as you think about that um, and think about what kind of candidate we should be nominating, um, keep that in mind because that's really important that we, we think about. For me, um, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, aspects a lot of uh, criteria that I have when I'm not when I am vetting a candidate but one of my top ones is can they get elected if they can't get elected if they can't beat the Democrat doesn't matter how good they are so so let me tell you a little story for eight years ago when we had pre when we had our caucus meetings and uh, we were having our presidential preference poll, and who, who remembers who was on the poll eight years ago? Everybody says Trump, which is so funny to me because eight years ago, there probably wasn't one person in this room who voted for him. Um, we all, okay, so I went to, so I took, now remember, one of my, one of my top criteria is maybe not the very top, but it's up there is who can get elected. So I looked at the list of people that were running. I think we had like 12 candidates running for president that year for a Republican. If Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, McMuffin. Ben Carson, I mean, there was a whole slew of them, great guys. I looked at that list and I said, of all of these, who can beat Hillary? And the only person I thought on that list that could beat Hillary was Trump. Now, was he the very best candidate? Was he, did he adhere to our platform or the Constitution the very best of all those candidates? No, I don't think so. But for me, I did not want four more years of Hillary Clinton. And so I went to my caucus meeting all, and I was gonna run for county delegate. I, I hadn't been that interested in the state and the national part of it at that point. I was just excited to run for county delegate. So I get up there and when it came time for me to give my little speech, then they asked questions. And one of the questions they asked was, who are you gonna vote for for president? And I'm sitting there thinking, okay, so as a county delegate, I don't vote for president. Um, that's our national delegates who vote for state, who vote for president, who go and uh, nominate our Republican candidate for president. Um, but I was like, you know, I was proud of the fact that I was a Trumper. And so I'm like, Donald Trump, oh my gosh, my precinct like erupted. They were furious. And I think I got one vote my own vote. I don't even think my husband voted for me. Because um, he was not a Trumper. Um, so, uh, me, there was like three of us. Me, Judy Bozeman, and Judy Houston. None of our husbands agreed with us. We were the three Trumpers from the very beginning. And now we look at today's atmosphere and all of you who hated him, love him. So, I, I just I tell you that story just to help you realize that candidates change, opinions change, people can be good presidents, can be good in their positions that we might not have thought they could have been. 
And um, we shouldn't be like throwing tomatoes at our precinct members who don't agree with us. Um, so that's why it, that whole story was meant to say why I, I want to look at who can get elected. Because I don't want, and so this time I'm like, please, I hope Trump can beat Biden. I just, I, I wanted to beat him. I'm, I'm a little bit nervous about the whole Robert Kennedy thing in there. I remember the whole Ross Perot thing, and it just, it worries me a little bit. But I'm hoping that more Democrats will pull to him and away from Biden. My son, who's a liberal, told me he's not voting for Biden. And I'm like, oh, are you going to vote for Trump? No, I'm not voting. So I'm good. I'm good. Don't vote. At least that's one less vote for Biden. Um, <laughs> Okay, so now I want to tell you about convention. Um, when you come to convention, you will arrive at about, okay, it's at the Hurricane High School, March 23rd. You will arrive at about 8.30. That's when registration starts. And then we will go <clears throat> into, uh, once you get credentialed, and that will take a minute, so just realize you're going to stand in line for a minute. Be prepared for that. Um, you'll get credentialed. And then you will go to um, the booth area. And we have almost every candidate coming. Uh, state ones included. So if you're a state delegate as well, you'll get to mix and mingle with them as well. Uh, once 10 o'clock arrives, we start. And we start on time. So we'll invite you to come in and start. We'll get credential, I mean, we'll have, get a credential report. We'll approve the rules and the agenda. And then we get to business. So in the business, uh, so I told you about this before. Um, <clears throat> it's not that one. Maybe I don't have it up still. There it is, voting. Okay, you need to be aware that your county central committee did two very good things in November. And some of you are going to hear this again. Two very good things a year ago in November um, in which they, number one, raised our threshold to 70% making it so that a candidate had to get 70% to be the only candidate coming out of the convention. So if they don't reach 70, the top two come out, which gives voters the opportunity to vote, which they want. They want the opportunity to vote. Remember, we're a nominating body. They are the electing body. So we give them the opportunity to elect. Um, and the other thing we did is we made our votes transparent. So we vote electronically so that it it can all go into um, <clears throat> a spreadsheet so that we can see. And as we vote, you can literally watch your name come up with your vote next to it and see that your vote is cast correctly. Um, and we do a test vote to begin with, so you all can see that and see how it works. And then when we vote, um, and the test vote, we don't, um, we don't audit that vote. We don't want to take the time to audit it, so we just let you watch it. And, we'll, and it'll just scroll up on the screen as everybody votes, their name comes in, and then you get to see how they voted and whatnot. Um, and then when we do the vote that counts, then we audit it. So you'll vote, and we have um, an audit team that looks at it to be sure that no one voted that shouldn't have voted, and that no one voted more than once. So just be aware of that. But in so doing, in making our votes transparent, we are now accountable to our precinct members. Which, tell me this, some people, um, well actually I haven't heard anybody upset about this, but some people have wondered why. So tell me, would you be okay if our, if, like our representative, uh, Neil Walter, if Neil Walter was up on the hill voting, would I be okay if I didn't know how he was voting? <laughs> Absolutely not. I want to know how he's voting. He's representing me. I elected him to go make decisions on my behalf, and I want to know what decisions he made. Same with your precinct members. They elected you to make decisions on their behalf, and they have the right to know how you voted on their behalf. So be prepared for that, which means that we have a couple of options. I'm really excited because we've, we've been trying this electronic voting for a couple of times now to get it tweaked so it works right, and I think we've come up with a fantastic idea to make it so that it works really well. So, if you don't have a phone, no big deal, you can just go and we'll have computers there and you can just go vote on a computer. Um, but if you have a phone, it works out great because you'll just point it at the QR code and um, your ballot will come up, you'll vote, submit it, and then you're done. 
So it's super easy. In the past, we've mailed, we've emailed you the ballot. This time, we figured that we can just give you the QR code and you can just vote that way and it'll be way easier than having to try to find it in your email and wait because sometimes with our email service, we can send out 600 emails, but it might take 15 minutes to get through all 600. So <clears throat> this will be immediate and it will go super smooth. Um, let me see, what else was I gonna tell you about that? Mm, I think that's all. So that's what I need you to know. That's how voting works. Um, now, a few dates, and this is where I'm finally getting to your question, sir. March 19th, you need to put that on your calendar. It should you, I'm, I'm hoping that you got these calendars last or Tuesday night. Um, okay, well, let me give you some dates to write down them. <clears throat> so March 19th, we have invited the county, uh, well, okay, let me say this right. The county candidates, we've invited them to come to here, to Dixie Tech. We will let them have booze and a meet and greet, and then we will hold a debate afterwards for all the county delegates to attend. Uh, okay, let me just think in my mind a minute. Uh, 5.30 to 6.30 will be the, um, the meet and greet time. 6.30 to 7.30 will be the first, no, 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 we probably go 45 minutes. So 6.30 to 7.15 will be the first debate. And then 7.15, 7.30-ish till 8 will be the second debate. So in that debate, we will be listening to, so <clears throat> because there are so many state races, trying to hold a debate with all of them is going to be really hard so we're going to bring some of those state races into this county one so our state school board <laughs> race we're going to bring into that one and then our senate race the uh senate 29 race we'll bring into that one so that is march 18th 19th oh, thank you the 18th is my son's birthday i probably shouldn't tell that information okay um so March 19th is that date. So that's where you can come and meet the candidates. Now, sir, here's another thing to tell you is that I can guarantee you, they may not, I don't know where you're from. Where are you from? Dameron Valley. Dameron Valley, okay. So a candidate may not come to Dameron Valley, but I can guarantee you they will be holding town halls throughout our county and they will plug you into whichever one you want to come to. So you will have opportunities. So that's the opportunity we're going to provide as a party, but the candidates will provide lots of opportunities as well. And they'll be able to reach me through you? Yes, okay. they will be. So every candidate has to sign a, a delegate agreement form, similar to our data protection policy form. So they have to sign that. And once they sign that telling us they're gonna protect our, the data we're giving them, then we'll give them your information and they will reach out and call and talk to you. And you'll get tons of emails. They'll, they'll be coming, just hang on. Um, then on March 22nd, we just made this decision today so I don't have any details for you, but <laughs> March 22nd, which is the day before convention, we're gonna throw a little backyard meet and greet. And we're talking about maybe having a barbecue or what I really think is gonna happen is we're gonna contact the candidates and say, you wanna provide food? Um, and so maybe it'll be pizza, maybe it'll be burgers. I don't know, I have no specifics, but watch your stuff. Um, I'm assuming it'll be about 6 p.m. We, cover, we have a couple of backyards that we are talking to to see about having it in their backyard. I hope one of them, it's really, really nice, but it would be an Ivan's, so just be prepared. If not, the other one's in St. George, no, Santa Clara. Um, so that's another opportunity for you to meet and mingle with these guys and meet and mingle with us and let's have a party. Um, um, we would allow, no, because the state, the reason why this happened is we had a candidate reach out to us about it, and so and it's a state candidate. So it would be for county and state delegates. Both candidates? Yes. Yep. Okay, then on April 9th, this is for the state delegates. April 9th, we are going to do a state candidate meet and greet debate forum. Here again, 
same time as the first one, 5.30 to 6.30, and then we'll hold, we may hold three debates that day. I'm thinking that we're going to put our Senate, the U.S. Senate and the Congressional District 2 candidates together because a lot of the same questions that we would ask them would be the same because they're all dealing with U.S. policy. And then we'll do uh, the state candidates and we'll figure out which ones we'll put together there um, for that one as well. Here. Okay, then our state convention is April 27th, and I'm pretty sure uh, um, that's at the Salt Palace, so I don't know how hard it is to get motels or what, but if you need to get one, you might want to get on it, because, like for me, I usually just drive up that morning, but uh, they'll probably, the state party will do something that night on the 26th as well, so you may want to go to that and participate in whatever that party's going to be. Okay, it, oh, I'm not going to, okay, I'm just going to be, I'm going to put a smile on my face and wish the people would have read emails. So, yes. Yeah, or you didn't get one, sorry. Um, it is at the Salt Palace on April 27th, okay? That the sheet that you signed, uh, I mean, the, the duties that you got, the dates were wrong. We forgot to change them from two years ago. I'm sorry. We tried to do everything. Um, but we're human and we make mistakes. Um, I do not know, but I'm going to assume 10 with credentialing starting at 8. That's usually what it is. And you guys plan on that state convention, plan on it being till like midnight. We have a... Okay, so at the Salt Palace, um, so like I said, plan on that it'll, it's going to be a long, late meeting. We have a ton of business to do in nominating all those candidates. I, I can't remember how many races. There's got to be at least 10. So it's going to be a very long meeting. Just be prepared, especially when we have like 11 people running for Senate. David, I believe it's going to start at 10, but don't quote me. Um, usually it starts at 10 with credentialing starting at 7 or 8 a.m. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, county is going to be a breeze um, because we run a super efficient county meeting, you guys. <laughs> if, you, if you've never been to our county convention, just wait. Come to our county convention, see how great it is, then go to state, and you'll be like, wow, we live in the best county ever. Um, it, we, yeah, county, I, we have our agenda set to be done by two, but, um, so, four hours, 10 to two. I would assume that state one, though, will go till at least 7 p.m., probably, maybe longer. It'll depend because can, um, delegates can vote to adjourn and skip some of the meeting, which we need to stay and get the meeting done. I mean, we can't leave before the elections are done, but there'll be other stuff that needs to be addressed, and so I hope that everybody stays and takes care of the business as well. All right, any, um, any further questions? Yes. Go to the county convention early. And the state convention will have a lot more delegates. Go early, but the county convention, I went there once and met an obscure candidate by the name of Mike Lee that was running for Senate. And I had a 15 minute one on one with him because I went early and there was nobody else there. So if you're saying I can't meet him, I don't know how to meet him, uh, meet and greet. Go early. They'll be there. And if you're early, there's not that many people that's going to be there. And you can have your one on with one with them for a long time. 
<laughs> yes. Hey, be, just a little bit of housekeeping, then we'll take a couple of questions. But if you did not receive an email about tonight's meeting, there's a problem. Because we did send an email at like 4 o'clock this morning. So if you didn't receive it, we need to figure out why. First thing, check your spam, promotions, junk. Check in there for it. If you cannot find it, we need to have you meet with us and let's figure out why, why we didn't get it to you because that's how you will receive your call to convention. We don't mail them, we email them. So if you don't get your call to convention, that's a problem. So be sure that we have a good email for you and that we get you. Lori. Hi, I have a question. Uh, it seems like we have a whole bunch of people that are gonna do some research. Is there a way that we can open a Google Doc so we can start putting all the information that people gather so we don't have to work as hard? Oh, is that a great idea? Um, so, so let me tell you, last year, two years ago, we did a Google page, a Google group, not, sorry, a Facebook group, and it was for the delegates, and we really didn't like the direction it went. It ended up just being a bashing of every candidate. And um, I don't think we need to do that as Republicans. We don't need to bash our candidates. Um, and, and then it ended up being a bashing each other if we didn't agree. And um, I ended up having people very upset. And so we finally closed the group down. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to do that because I don't want to, you know, people will say, oh, you're taking away my free speech if I don't let them be ignorant. So I don't know. Yeah, that's what we had hoped it was going to be. <laughs> so let us think on that and see if we can figure out a way to share where we can share and be civil while we share. That would be really good. Yes, sir. Hey, Lisa. Um, Kurt Gordon, STG24. Kurt. Yeah. Hey, I haven't stopped a... talking to you for a while last night. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's uh, three little words that have had probably the most profound meaning in human history. And those three little words are we the people. Um, so that my point in bringing that up is that language is extremely important. And there's a lot of newspeak happening now. And I don't see anything in the Republican Party platform that is defending against language changes, the newspeak is happening. So how do how do we if how do we influence uh, the, the platform to get some defense okay. against language change. So platform, the platform is approved by the state delegates. And it is, it hasn't been changed since 2009. Um, and there's a big reason for that. They took years to make this platform and lots of debate and lots of very long conventions because it's, it's taken care of in the organizing convention. And because of that, a lot of people have been very leery to try to change or add more because they know how long it took to get it to where it was. But if you want to, all you have to do is submit a, a, a proposal, an amendment for it. Um, you can submit that to the state party secretary. They're the ones who take care of that. Okay. Oh, we have some down here. April, uh, let's bring a mic to you. All right. I have Hold the on, mic right now at Dameron down. Valley once again. Yes. Um, in the last meeting, which I attended because of the role that I was asked to play, you mentioned supporting the party's candidate. A lot of the reason that I was elected is because in our county system, the last county commissioner that was put in and is now an incumbent was due to a death yes. in that and that slides that person in really solid with no real votes and most of my constituents which i will call constituents yes they are your constituents they don't want that guy in so how do i go along with the party but so, campaign against a non somebody that's not being um, challenged because of in, his incumbency. So let me, yeah, I was surprised that we didn't have very many run against our incumbents this year, um, especially when I know that there's quite a bit of angst out, uh, angst out there against some of these folks. 
Um, but remember that I'm talking about once we have a nominee, that's when we get behind our candidate. Prior to getting a nominee, we're out campaigning for who, well, I'm not. Um, our executive committee has a neutrality clause and we have to stay neutral. But, um, but you don't. And you can go and campaign for your, your choice. Um, but once we have a nominee, that's when, if we're going to be a party and we're going to be a strong party, we need to get behind our nominee. But if there's no nominee, he's just, he is slotted by the, the living Okay, so that's, so, yes. So, how it, the elections work in Utah is that if someone dies, in this case, our county commissioner died, several people put forth their name to be um, elected, to fill that interim. And your county central committee, your chairs and vice chairs of your precincts are the ones who make that election. And so those candidates went out and, and the county central committee vetted those candidates. This is the only time when, and this is why I say, when I say we are a nominating body, as a delegates, as a state delegates, county delegates, we are a nominating body. A county central committee, we become an electing body and we did elect and we have elected eight times since i've been chair because of um resignations or deaths that have happened in our county so they were represented your the the precinct and this is what representative government this is why i love a republic and i love being in a representative government so the county i mean the yeah the county uh Central Committee, made up of precinct chairs and vice chairs, are the ones who elected Dean Cox's replacement. And then he finishes that term, and then he runs again, and nobody ran against him, so I don't know. Now, I, he is our sitting commissioner, and I love Commissioner Snow, and, and I think that, I mean, I love all of our guys. I think they're all doing a great job, and they all have a hard job to do. So, but if we don't like what they're doing, I guess we run against them or we find somebody to run against them. Um, but it's not, there was no time when the party had to get behind him because he was never a nominee. He was elected. Exactly. Yeah. And that's just how, that's how the Utah Constitution set up replacements midterm. So that's, you know, if we don't like that, then we've got to, get a legislature to change it because that's what the law is yes this may sound like a trivial question but for those of us that are old and decrepit um i feel that way today at, at the high school do you know is, is the yes it's an be, auditorium it's in the auditorium yes. okay not in the bleachers yes okay. we were Lori was in charge of finding us a spot and we are very grateful she found us an auditorium we don't have to sit in the bleachers <laughs> david Mine's just a suggestion. Yes. Uh, people may want to make sure they get familiar with Robert's rules of order. Yes, thank you. That's a great suggestion. Uh, do, in conventions, both county and state, and even in our county central committee meetings, we run the meeting per Robert's rules of orders in order to keep the meeting in order. And so you want to know how a motion's made, um, if you want to make a motion, how to do that, how to, you know, what you do after to get a second and how we vote on it, how we discuss. It's pretty simple. Just go in and do Robert's Rules for Dummies on Google and just look at that little short list of what to do and it'll give you really good information. Okay, over here. Can somebody be nominated to run against one of these people that only have one person running for a seat at convention? Not now. Not now? But it could before? No. No. No, you, sorry. It, the nominating period was January 2nd through the 9th, I think. So that they ha and and we don't nominate them at convention. They that is nominated through the state who delegates it to the county to do that. So we don't make the nominations for elected office. Yes. Okay. So to go on what the gentleman said, if you can't get to the to the convention early, you really should. There's another way. I've been a candidate and I can tell you. 
what happens is, especially statewide candidates, they're gonna leave Washington County Convention and they're gonna jump in a car and go to another convention and they'll probably cover three in one day. Yep. They're in the car a lot and they're not driving. You can reach out to the campaign and set an appointment and that candidate will call you and they'll stay on the phone for as long as you want them on the phone. And you can FaceTime them. There are all kinds of things you can do to get the attention and to get the one-on-one -on -one that you really want. That's really true. Um, they want your vote. As delegates, they understand you are the ones who are going to nominate. And they want your vote. So they want to talk to you. So just reach out and they'll give you the opportunity. Yes. Yes, if, our, if we want to change our email or we didn't get an email today, yes. who do we see or who do we contact? Um, probably Brandon. Brandon, raise your hand. Okay. If you didn't get Thank the you. email, talk to Brandon. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Oh, wait, I've got one right here. Hi, and, and, and I heard it in the back, too. We were, uh, we're still a little confused on where... Um, what was I the county convention and I, the state convention. I know you got the email, but I'm not getting them. Okay, so, so that's county really convention big problem. I don't is, know where to go. Count, so make sure we've got your right email. And county convention is at Hurricane High School. State convention is at the Salt Palace. You, you, that will come from the state party. So you'll get your call to convention from the state party. And calls to convention always come two weeks before. So if you don't see anything two weeks before, get on the phone with somebody and say, I didn't get my call to convention. And then let's figure out why. Yeah. All right, you guys, it is past eight, so we will excuse you. And if you need to come ask questions, come ahead. Thank you.